Like many others who can get it running stably, I have been enjoying my time with Fallout London. I often check the Fallout 4 and Fallout London Nexus pages for new mods and updates that might be relevant to me, but to my pleasant surprise, today I stumbled upon the Fallout Vault 13 demo instead. To offer a quick background, the original Fallout was very, very different from current iterations. Everything was top down and you clicked around a large map to move throughout the open world, which was delivered in a very different way from the modern understanding of an open world game. Fallout Vault 13 seeks to recreate that original Fallout experience in Fallout 4's engine. Now, this is an especially massive undertaking, even when compared to many other Fallout or Elder Scrolls recreation projects, because it is next to impossible to recreate a one-to-one -one functional version of the original Fallout game in the style of the new games. This is due to how genuinely different those games played compared to Fallout today. If Fallout were to just be remade in the most bare bones fashion possible, it would look very strange in Fallout 4's engine and it would play very oddly as well. Because the original game wasn't quite open world like we think of today and was more a series of world spaces connected to one another between loading screens, kind of like Starfield but not really, the devs of this project are seeking to fill out the world almost as if the original Fallout was being made today. This means the original story and quests are there, but now there are more locations to fill out the space and explore, like in a Bethesda-style RPG. You'll probably level up more, find a lot more loot than you did in the original Fallout, and fight a lot more enemies. The game will likely not be nearly as hard as the original Fallout, nor will it be able to maintain that original atmosphere for a litany of reasons that are of no fault of the mod team. There's a further discussion here about how the true original Fallout experience will not be able to be maintained, and that's just the reality of getting something like this. It does not matter whether this mod team makes this game, or if Bethesda got together with Tim Kaine, Leonard Boyarsky, and the whole original crew, the original Fallout experience will be changed if it is remade into a modern first slash third person action open world RPG. From my time with the mod, it is clear to me that the developers are not seeking to recreate the purest one to one hardcore Fallout experience you would get if you played that game. This is the original Fallout being remade with the existing gameplay systems in Fallout 4. Not that my opinion really matters here, but this is probably the best decision they could go with. This will help the team create a taste of the original Fallout experience and allow players who have never played that game to experience the story and events in an incredibly digestible and modern format. That is what obviously keeps most Fallout fans from playing 1, 2, and Tactics. They are old, dated, hard, they don't hold your hand, and sometimes they're hard to even get set up and working with or without the help of mods and community patches. Tons of players would love to experience them, but the barrier to entry is too great. This mod looks like it will serve that giant swath of players while also offering something fresh and new to those who have played the first Fallout. That was a whole lot of preface to the mod, but I felt like I had to explain that to people as we discuss the mod because not everything you will see was in the original game. As I stated earlier, there are more locations, enemies, NPCs, guns, and general items throughout the world representing this portion of the original game's map than there were in the original game by far. This mod is delivering a unique experience, but I can tell you from having played the original game that so far, this mod is maintaining the quest structure and heart of the original game while applying its own music, voice acting, and open world design. Project Vault 13 is looking to not only be an exciting recreation of a very, very outdated classic, but also an opportunity for this team to apply their own creative vision to the world of the original Fallout because there are many gaps to fill as they translate the original game to this new form. Again, I don't want people to hear that and think, oh no, they're gonna ruin Fallout and make their own game in it. The point is they have to make additions and changes. This would be best understood by playing the original game and then considering how on earth you would make it work in Fallout 4's engine. You would quickly realize you must make changes and that includes removing and adding things naturally. With the footage I'm showing you, there is no voice acting and that's for the demo version of the mod, but there will be voice acting for the final version of the mod. They go into further detail on the Nexus page, but the point is they will have voice acting by then, which is incredible because the original game itself had very limited instances of voice acting. So if they managed to apply quality voices throughout the entire world, 
that will be a notable feat in fleshing out the game beyond its original form. You will start out in Vault 13 and then be sent away to find a water chip, just as you do in the original game. However, I quickly realized the simple rat cave from the original game had been made into a much more visually appealing and engaging environment for the perspective shift. They didn't just want to recreate the cave layout from the original game, they made a well-designed area and put time into crafting a believable space. This is a clear example of this being more of a reimagining than a recreation, and I am all the more excited because of it. This is further evidenced by them using unique models and animations for the weapons they're including in the mod. You'll see me using a few throughout the video, and you'll notice they look different from their Fallout 4 counterparts. They also drew from Bethesda's famous vault exit moments and placed you upon a large hill upon exiting the cave Vault 13 is within, much like Fallout 3 or Fallout 4's similar moments. This was certainly not present in the original game, but it was a welcome addition. The looting experience is largely different and a lot more relevant in this version of Fallout because it mimics Fallout 4's systems. I'm assuming we will have features like armor and weapon modding, which were not present in the original Fallout. Now, making shady sands is one thing, but how do you design a world for this new game where there was none before? In Fallout, locations were just spots on the greater map, but this team has had to create a massive open world space to place the original locations in, along with many others to fill the space between. See, before when you left Vault 13 and headed toward Vault 15, you just clicked on the map, and then you would stumble into Shady Sands as you noticed the marker on the map along your way. Now, the location simply must be situated between the player at Vault 13 and Vault 15 in the greater world space, so the player naturally stumbles upon Shady Sands by following their quest marker to Vault 15 in the open world space. As I've stated, there are new locations here, and I took my time exploring a few that were within reach. I had a fun instance of stumbling upon a stunted Yaogwai, probably a bit too early in game, but I eventually had my moment and carried on. This is an experience you won't get in the original Fallout on your way to Shady Sands or Vault 15, but here it was, and I thought my experience was better off because of it. Nothing groundbreaking, but it is taking the good parts of new Fallout and applying them to their version of old Fallout. Finally, I made my way to Shady Sands, and I was pleasantly surprised to see their new rendition of this space. Much like the area outside of Vault 13, this was recognizable but clearly very different from the original. The adobe buildings looked great, and it stayed true to the original as it felt like two distinct sections. At least to me it did, as I could clearly tell there was the monument entry area and then the deeper section of Shady Sands with farms and Brahmin, just like the original. While I was here I would add to my quest list as I was tasked with taking out the rad scorpions plaguing Shady Sands. Of course I had to recruit Ian. He is among the cast of characters within Shady Sands from the original game, along with Seth, the town guard who goes on to form the NCR Rangers in Fallout 2, Eridesh, the original town leader, Tandy, who goes on to be the longest standing president of the NCR and Eridesh's daughter, among others. Ian, on the other hand, is a companion and a very useful early game one at that. Just don't stand in front of him for too long. I would take him with me on my journey to the Rad Scorpion Cave, another wonderfully reimagined area. Lucky for me, I found out here that this mod will maintain that companions are not essential, just like the original. Unfortunately for Ian, he would meet an early game end on this run. Rest in pieces, Ian. A moment of silence. With Ian and the Rad Scorpions dead, I was now a higher level and had better armor. I was ready to continue to Vault 15 and find the water chip to save my vault. If you know the original game, you know you would be a fool to head here without a handy dandy rope or two, and luckily I was prepared. We battled the locals of Vault 15 and found out there's nothing here. Something to note though, I found quite a few ropes just casually looting as I led up to this location. This item was placed in specific locations in the original game like all the loot was I believe, so a rope was harder to come by, especially if you don't know where to look. This is just an example of how this will be a different but similar experience. It would be kind of a pain in the ass and hard to do to place individual ropes, like a limited amount of ropes throughout the world space in this game, it would just be very frustrating for players to find 
without a map marker, just sort of sending them loose into this vast open world. So, you know, having rope casually appear throughout the world really makes sense, especially with Fallout 4's systems of junk and everything with scrapping and materials. It makes sense for a rope to just be another item in the world space. And just when we realize the water chip is not in Vault 15, much like the original game, the vastness of the open world quickly goes from exciting to daunting. The world isn't just yours to explore, but rather acts as the haystack to your needle, or water chip in this case. Of course, this is one of five areas the full release of Vault 13 will include, so the water chip is out there, but that's for another day beyond the demo. We aren't quite done, however, as upon returning to Shady Sands, Seth will inform you of another quest. Tandy has been kidnapped, and not just by any old raiders. She's been taken by a group known as the Cons, and we have to save her. Seth somehow thinks it's reasonable to get mad I don't want to save her for free, and then proceeds to gaslight me into doing it anyway. I can't pass up the opportunity to see this out, so we make our way to the Con encampment and I meet their leader. There are a few options to choose from, but I decided to challenge him to a 1v1 on Rust, and like any true Chad, he accepted. We duked it out, I won, got the girl in the loot, and made my way back to town as the hero. Unfortunately, I did this in vain because the town would go on to be devastated in another instance of the all too common nuclear annihilation. I do want to note it's featured in the demo that you can finish the Saving Tandy from the Cons quest in a few different ways. You can handle that engagement differently, so you can see those if you decide to play the demo or check out the final version. Anyway, I'm going to show a view of the full map with every location marked on it, so dip out if you don't want to see any of that and you want to check things out for yourself. Okay, so here's the map. Again, this is one of five playable sections from the final version. If you have played the original, you know there are new locations here, but there is also much, much more to the map. I'm incredibly excited to see how they pull off the Boneyard, the Master, and the Cathedral personally. Especially given we're coming off of the success of Fallout London and hopefully some patches and fixes to get a lot more players playing that without issues or playing it at all. Uh, getting another huge project, a successful one like this, in a much different kind of project as well. It's not a completely unique mod project. It's a recreation of something, but like I said, with aspects that are deeply reimagined and changed along with, you know, potentially more fleshed out voice acting that the original game didn't have. Uh, I'm not sure they might be including the settlement experience as well, which I think could oddly fit very well in, a, in an experience like this because of how open and potentially empty the map could end up feeling because of how spread out things will have to be, although obviously they're doing a great job filling things in and adding different unique locations. Um, but it does beg the question, will they use the settlement system? I don't know if they've answered that yet. I haven't seen anything, but uh, it would make sense because s there's so much loot and um, scraps and things like that around the world. It's very similar to Fallout 4 in that regard. So to have all that stuff existing you know, maybe it's just for armor mods and weapon mods, and that's cool too, but I don't know. Who know they, they could implement the settlement system, and I think it would work sort of uh, unobtrusively. It wouldn't get in people's way, uh, and I mean that. I don't, I'm not saying that like Todd might say it. Like, you actually probably wouldn't have to use it in this experience. The story is isolated. It's on its own. There already is the story for Fallout 1. The quests are already established, and none of them need a settlement system so you could just theoretically put the settlement system in and have it not touch any of the quests in game and everything could work separately anyways that's enough of my yammering thanks for watching and thanks to this mod team for releasing a demo check the links below and go download and try the mod out for yourself it is a very simple install and they have more info about the mod and project if you head in that direction